Well, it's time for another It's a Wonderful Lifetime interview. And joining us today on Skype is Annie Clark to talk about Ghost of Christmas Past. Hello, Annie. Hi. <laughs> it is so great to have you here. Thank you. I'm excited to talk about this. I haven't even seen the movie yet. Oh my gosh. And I feel like I... I'm talking about it so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know to talk about the movie and you're like, uh, I think it performed very well, but I'm, I want to see it myself, you know? So yeah, hopefully all the scenes stayed in all the yeah. ones that I shot. <laughs> well, by the way, I screened it last night. I can tell you that. And it was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. And I think a lot of uh, viewers that are Christmas fans will absolutely love this movie. Oh, that's good to hear. <laughs> so tell us more about this holiday story. Yeah, well, it's it's no small feat. I'm pretty sure she gets like a week deadline to make <laughs> amends with everyone that she has ghosted. So basically, Ellie wants love, but she has a real problem taking that that next step to actually go out on the dates and, and just take a leap to actually mm -hmm. be able to find love. So it's not that she's mean or she wants to um, hurt anyone's feelings. She just has a problem with going from the talking stage to actually dating. So luckily for her, she has a friend who is there to help her sort of get over that, that little hurdle she has. Yeah. And we will see that in this holiday movie. Now, Annie, I believe ghosting really has become such a common thing now with the use of social media. Wouldn't you agree? I mean, I think it's like common these days, which is kind of Ye terrible. Yeah. And it's a really <laughs> modern story to be tackled in one of these sort of more traditional Christmas movies. I don't think I've seen a movie that has tackled something that's so like prevalent in young people's lives today. I know, right? Because I'm like, this is spot on with what's going on with the young generation, you know, because they're all on their phones, they're on social media. They never put their phones down, Annie. Okay. <laughs> so... Uh, what did you actually learn about ghosting from taking on this role? Because, uh, of course, before watching the movie, we all know what ghosting is. But did, did you learn anything new? I mean, I think we all probably knew deep down that honesty is the best policy. Yeah. Um, but you really see in this movie, like, it's just better to say. Because the some of the messages Ellie ends up sending to people are like, look, you're great. I just wasn't feeling it and and best of luck to you. And it's like, why is it so hard for us to say that? But I think we just put so much other stuff on it. And as you'll see in the movie and as you saw, I'm sure last night, not all of her attempts to make amends went that well <laughs> or went as well as she thought. You know, there's a couple wild cards. So I think that's maybe what we're all thinking in our heads if we're tempted to ghost someone. We don't want to deal with the wild cards. Right, and I think a lot of us that do ghost someone, we are really the type of person that's like, oh, we don't want to make anyone feel bad or feel upset, so we just don't want to say anything, and then that's where it turns into, like, we have ghosted somebody. But uh, <laughs> now, Ellie, in the movie, she has a meeting with a psychic. We will see that happen in this film. Now, have you ever went to a fortune teller in your own personal life? I've always wanted to go do something like that, but then I've always been a little creeped out because I'm like, what if they tell me something I really don't want to hear? You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, totally. I, I never have. Um, I've always wanted to, but this movie made me be like, uh, I'm not so sure. This lady was pretty spot on about some things. <laughs> and I guess in the end, she did sort of help her with the major problem she had. But yeah, I'm scared to hear anything negative. I know. I was just like, I don't know what might would even happen if I go to a fortune teller. But you know what? If you want to go and, hey, we both can go together, you know, hey, it'll be so, yeah. Yeah, I mean, go. hey, it could help us with a huge, a huge problem in our lives that we have a week to fix. <laughs> right? Oh my goodness. Now, Dan, he co-stars in his holiday movie with you. How was it like to have him as your partner in crime in this? He was amazing. He, I mean... As you probably saw, the role really calls for someone with amazing comedic timing. And when I first read the script, I thought, oh, I, I hope they get someone really funny for this role. And when I met him, I was like, you are exactly what I pictured for this role. So it was amazing. We got to improv so much, which was nice. The director really allowed us to just do our own thing and play in some of the scenes. And he was just the perfect partner to do that with. Now, Annie, what I found unique is Ellie. She designs video games for a living, making these character artists. Uh, what was one of your favorite video games when you were a kid growing up? I'm just curious. 
So, I mean, this is probably a really generic answer, but I loved um, Mario Kart. Really? You know, I love Pac-Man. It's so fun. Pac-Man. Oh. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that's a classic one. That's Ellie's favorite and Charlie's in the movie. Um, yeah, I've never actually played Pac-Man, but I had a, a Nintendo 64 and I had Mario Kart and that was my favorite. You know, the games were so much better back in the day. Like we had, um, like you said, the Nintendo, I think it was like the Nintendo DS, the Wii. But my favorite thing, because I have a twin sister, so we would always play, you know, video games, arcade sort of type games. Uh, the GameCube. That's not even, I don't even think a thing anymore, but I used to love that. Have you ever yeah. heard of Annie? I've heard of it, but I never had one. I wasn't even that into video games myself. I played just Mario Kart and that's yeah. it. But now it seems like games today are so complicated. I feel wow. like I'd be bad at them. <laughs> like, I don't know the Minecraft stuff or I'm like, what is that? I'm like, okay now. Okay, really? No, you know, I'm like, oh. <laughs> I can't, I can't get the hang of it. So I was really acting when I was playing a, a video game expert. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm like, don't do it. Don't play the Minecraft of it all. <laughs> all right, so what makes this movie unique versus the others that are on the lineup this year for It's a Wonderful Lifetime? Because Lifetime has a lot of great holiday movies coming up. They do. And I'm a huge fan of these kinds of movies. I look forward to them every year. But when I read the script for this one, um, even though it has some traditional elements and it makes all these references to A Christmas mm -hmm. Carol um, and some other just classic you know, the, the lifetime format of Christmas movies. Yeah. I felt like this one was a bit different because it, of the modern element. Like they're bringing in this ghosting, which is a very, you know, 2021 kind mm -hmm. of problem. And I also felt like it didn't have as many of the classic tropes. Um, Ellie wasn't going back to her small town. It all took place in the city and sort of in the workplace. Mm -hmm. which um, I thought was kind of an interesting take on it. Um, and yeah, really, I, I feel like this one is maybe geared towards a younger audience in a way, just I agree. people who are online dating, they can relate to it. Well, everyone, be sure to tune in to Ghosts of Christmas Past. It premieres December the 14th at 8, 7 Central on Lifetime, part of It's a Wonderful Lifetime on their network. Annie Clark, you take care and have a great day. And thank you so much and happy holidays to you. Thank you. Happy holidays. <laughs>